Hello. Good afternoon, Tom. How are you? I'm very well. Yourself? Not too bad, thanks. It's uh, um, an honour and a pleasure to speak to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you very much. And uh, you're doing a whole lot of promo at the moment, I tell yep. you. Yep, busy boys. And, and South Africa also gets a look in this time round, which is always a good thing. Yeah, I've never, never, never talked to anyone from South Africa. Yeah, we speak this, English. Yeah. In this professional capacity. Uh-huh, uh-huh. uh-huh. <laughs> and, um, but uh, congratulations. Um, I think we're in order for the, you know, for the new album, Surrender. Oh, thanks a lot, man. No, we're really, we're really happy with it. It's like, it's quite, um, quite a task to make, like, it took us a long time to make it, and a very involved process, but I mean, now it's done, mm. we're kind of really proud of it, it's really exciting. Great, because I mean, with with everything that, um, you know, have well, all the success that has, has grown with the band, uh-huh. um, to the point of um, putting Surrender together, the time that you took to, to put the album together, did that, you know, did the fact that the focus was, was stronger, more, more firmly on you? now than say it was on the last album? Um, I don't know, it's difficult to gauge really. I mean, you know, difficult to, yeah, just, I mean, in different places, you know, last time we put the rec- uh, the, the last album out, say in America, there was like real, you know, because of the whole electronic hype kind of thing, that was, you know, a lot of people were, were interested in, in hearing that record and stuff. But I mean, we feel that the position we're in now, you know, we felt that the, the, the success of the last record kind of, liberated us to some degree you know it's it's good to know that people are listening to what you're doing kind of thing mm. it gives you that rather than I mean we see it's quite yeah quite like a giving us freedom to to be as adventurous and kind of you know mm. courageous kind of thing it's, you know it's also the confidence of knowing that, that people have at least a degree of interest in what you're doing so you feel if, if you've got people it, people's ear you know you can really push it out kind of mm. Thing. Mm. and I think also um, it's been a bit of an educational process for you as well, because to all intents and purposes, you created a whole new sound, and uh, people needed to sort of get their heads around it as well. Which I think, um, by you know, by surrender, they will um, they will one hundred percent be there. Although the last album, I think, uh, was just confirmation that you were certainly on the right track. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we do see, you know, it's, we do see it as like a progression. I think, you know, we, we are. You know, yeah. evolving in some way. I mean, it's interesting. You know, when we made our first album, that was a very definite. We had this idea, this definite sound that wasn't being made by anyone else, kind of thing. That was very clear, like manifesto of things. And then, and then the next record, that Digger and Hole, was kind of, you know, the move on from there, and like just, yeah, as you say, like reaffirming that kind of sound. But, but now, you know, we feel this record has just has kind of pushed it to even kind of further, kind of thing. And it's like. The range of, of emotions and stuff in this record is, is greater than anything we've kind of tackled before, really. Mm. I mean, I, you know, the, say the last record is a very intense, quite heavy record, you know, but, and there, there, there were elements of that that were hinted at, you know, the, the kind of the last few songs on that album are kind of like the starting point for this record. Mm. But we're just pleased in, in the way it just takes in so much you know, range of things and stuff, yeah. but, still, but still sounds cohesive, still makes sense. We're very keen for it to still hang together as an album you know we both love the idea of making albums kind of thing. yes because i think as well with you know with uh you know with with the chemical brothers i think um you probably find a lot of pessimists said well okay um you've you've created what you've created but where do you go from yeah there? but i think you've answered that in the sense of you've always exposed yourself to every element of music be it rock yeah. be it pop you know um and whether you're remixing for someone um, or just uh, you know working alongside them, you, you you've never excluded yourself from any area of sort of you know popular culture. Yeah, we just you know we, I mean the bottom line is we're both big music fans, and we you know we get very excited about different things, and and also we I mean we want them to come out in our music, you know we we, we these things manifest themselves, you know it's not like you know some people you hear their records and then they have to tell you they're a great fan of well, you know I don't know. Um, I don't know, kind of early blues, whatever, and they might be making, you know, I don't know, techno records or something, but generally if we have a love of a kind of music, it kind of comes out in how we, we write and stuff, and we try and get those kind of same feelings that we hear mm. in other music into mm. our music. And, I, and I'm sure you're at a point now where um, where you were asking people before to work with you, um, you probably have them queuing outside your door. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean... No, I mean the way we, the way we, that kind of works is that we work in the studio on ideas, you know, like basic song kind of ideas. And as we're working on them, you know, we feel 
you know, this track could could really work with someone singing, you know, and that's basically the bottom line is that neither me or Ed feel happy with our singing voices. Kind of thing. So it's like, you know, it's an interesting way of working. And this 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 album was was a bit different the way we collaborated. It was a lot more letting people kind of into our lives kind of thing because before it was very much people would come down and, uh, you know, do their bit and then go and we'd just mess around with it, you know, and that was it. Thank you very much. We'll do the rest. But this was more like, you know, say when Bernard Sumner came into the studio from, from New Order, it was like, you know, we just... You know, we're actually in the studio together for like a period of days, you know, for a week or so, and just really working on it together. And it was like, I think that's come of the confidence of, you know, you know, before it was we were very, um, you know, like, oh, we'll do this and whatever, screw you kind of thing. But now it's like, we just feel a lot more confident in letting people into our music, feel that we've established ourselves to the level that it, it can take in these other influences and other people, and it won't be kind of overpowered by the by the collaborations and stuff. Yes, because that's we've, important, I think. Yeah, because, I mean, we're very conscious of, of records when they have collaborators on that you just you lose, you know, the essence of what the, the music is, you know, it just becomes so fragmented and bitty kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But we feel that our, our sound is so strong and stuff, and it's kind of established now that... It gives us a freedom to try these different things. Mm. You know, but nice. I mean, if if you take a track like Out of Control, uh -huh. and is it a case of you call up Bernard Sumner with an idea and say, um, you know, to the point of him coming into the studio, is, is there a track, is there a back, yeah, is there a Yeah, I mean, the, the, the way that worked is that that was, you know, we had been working on, on, on the idea of the song for like, you know, six months or something, just, you know, working out the, the beats and the, the bass lines and the general kind of feel of it. I mean, it, it's been through many incarnations that track. It used to have like a very prominent kind of almost sitar kind of sounding lead sound kind of thing. We, we sent him this tape of like a finished kind of instrumental version. And then he, you know, spent a few months working out words and working out guitar parts and stuff at his studio in Manchester. And then he came down to us and we, and we worked on it together and we started structuring it together and he was, you know, he sung his parts and there was, he played a lot of guitar on it and stuff and we, you know, just, we, you know, we worked together on, on getting the sound and then, you know, he went, he went, um, back up to Manchester and we, we mixed the track and we, you know, brought in different elements that we liked but we always come up with a core idea ourselves and then get other people involved kind of thing because we feel, you know, that's, um, it takes us a long time to, to write ideas and it's, you know, I like it when the, per the person collaborating has had time to listen to the tape and see what, you know, inspires them from the music kind of thing. Right. And, I mean, would you say that there there is sort of a single element or a group of elements that, that strings uh, the new album together, you know, that you would, that gives it its consistency outside of sort of the, the obvious musicality of the whole? Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, it's difficult to... Uh, I suppose, I don't know, I mean, you know, in general kind of terms, I think we have a very unique way of, of using sounds and of, of the way we approach making music and of just how we put things together. It's, I can't, I don't know, it's like, I mean, you know, I always like to feel that, to know, and out, you know, I couldn't imagine anyone else making this record with these kind of, um, just the, the way the sounds work together and stuff and the way that, you know, things that would, that would seem like in, incompatible or, or not, you know, would not work together. You know, when we put them together, it kind of works, you know. And that's an, you know, for us, that's kind of been with us from the start. You know, when we started making records, like, seven years ago, we, we made this track, Song to the Siren, which was on the first album. And it was like, we were taking it around to DJs and stuff, and it was like, oh, you know, this will never work, it's too slow, we cannot, you know, can't play this in our sets, we're playing heavy kind of trance music, this won't really fit in. But we were, we were convinced that this music would sound great in that environment. You know, and then a few DJs did start playing it, and, you know, we were in clubs and you'd hear the music and it would really work, and you, you felt kind of in some way vindicated that you'd say, you know, this will work in a nightclub, this will be good. And we feel the same with this record, there's no place for it to exist as of yet. Mm. But we, we we make music. We feel I don't know. We just make music that that doesn't exist yet, and we we feel like we we can hear this music in our head that takes in all these different things, mm -hmm. and that's why we make it. That's the impetus to make it, really. And there there, there also seems to be, and I think it's sort of um, a big part of your success is that you. Um, I'm sure the people that you that you choose to collaborate with. You're, you're not only focusing on, you know, on people from the UK or musicians from the UK. You, 
you know, you've dabbled with mistakes, you've had the, the Mercury revs, you've had... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, I mean, the, you know, the, the thing is, you know, the thing about the people we work with is that we're huge, huge fans of, of what they do. You know, we love their music when we, me and Ed, you know, driving around or something or we're going to, you know, that's, you know, we listen to be listening to Mazzy Star or, you know, Mercury Rev records and stuff and it's music we enjoy. But beyond that, it's, it's also, you know, we have an ear of what we think will work with our music and, you know, music that will... That, that somehow sympathetic to what we do, and you know, we imagine it. You know, like when we approached Hope Sandoval, it was like we'd we'd written this kind of song, and it was just you know, imagine the combination of her voice and this music. You know, it just seemed like heaven to us, and it was like when she came in to sing it, it was just a beautiful thing. You know, it was like really exciting for us to you know work with someone like that. It's great. Now, I mean, there was a time, you know, with with both you know Ed and yourself that you were you were probably doing. More or taking on more work than you could, you know, could could really, you know, afford to, because uh, to the point that last year you you took a back seat and were very selective. As yeah, I mean, well, remixing wise, yeah, yes, definitely. Yes. Now, was that done, you know, for any particular reason, short of you were sort of killing yourself? Well, <laughs> I, I mean, for our, we, we, when we started, we we did a lot of remixes, but the the reason for that was that we had a lot of ideas and we were like we didn't have like a record contract that would allow us to put out a lot of you know like a lot of you know we wanted like put out music kind of every week kind of thing and the way the record companies are structured that wasn't really especially as we were on a small independent label at that time wasn't really financially viable to do that but we still had lots of ideas and lots of music we wanted to get out you know with at that time like 1994 95 we you know, we felt that we'd hit upon this new sound. And we, you know, we were DJing a lot. We wanted these records to play. And remixing for us was a, a brilliant way of getting our music out. Mm. You know, it was you know, it kind of circumvented the whole thing of, of of release schedules and stuff for us. You know, we could just we were doing like say two mixes, of, you know, uh, in, the, in like a fortnight and just keep doing them kind of thing. And it was brilliant for us because the records would get pressed up and we were able to play them at the weekend when we were DJing. And it was, you know, we were able to. To, to build ourselves kind of a set of, for us to DJ with and that was a great thing you know it's like a really good way to get out when you have bursting with ideas and stuff it was like a great way to get our music out mm -hmm. but I mean but as we got you know as we kind of developed kind of thing and we got more into say making albums and stuff and touring and playing live a lot and it, like, it, it became more difficult to find time to do it and also I mean we just became really focused on making this last record especially we, we, we were in the studio for like 14 months mm -hmm. And it was, didn't, I didn't want to have to think about doing anything else. We really got into being, you know, very involved in making this record. And it was like, I really enjoyed it kind of thing. It was like, it was very complicated and a difficult record to make. But it was, you know, engrossing kind of thing. I did, didn't want the distraction of doing other things, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, we made, I mean, that's one of the things that, where we did the DJ Mix album last year. Yes. That was, that's what that came out of, really, of like, we've been working very intensely on our album and it was like, I'd, you know, we wanted to do something which we can we could conceive and and actually do like in a in a space of like a week or so, and we just did that, and it was like a nice release. Got us out of the studio, and just you know we we taped one of our kind of DJ sessions, and it was like that was something you could visualise and then actually achieve in a short space of time. Whereas you were working on this album that was spiralling out of control, mm. <laughs> kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, and yeah. you had you know you couldn't conceptualise a finished thing at the time. But that was easy, you just did it and it was done and it was like, oh, yeah, that's mm. how you make records again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was like that kind of thing. Yeah, it sort of gets the focus back. But yeah, yeah, it was good, you know. But I mean, as for, you know, for remixing, it was just, it was just, just you know, we were coming up with lots of ideas and I think if we if were doing other lots of other mixes and stuff, I'm sure there'd be ideas that would come up and we think, oh, I wouldn't mind that to be on our record, really. And then that's a dangerous thing to get into when you're remixing because it's like, you want to, Try and make the best piece of music possible, but if you keep thinking, oh, I wouldn't mind that idea for myself, it's like mm -hmm. it's dangerous ground, really. Well, I mean, I mean, when, and by comparison to um, to doing the remixing to the point of doing your own stuff, um, do you love them equally, or do you have a preference? Uh, I mean, I, I, I like doing remixes. It's an interesting thing, to, especially with like the bands we've done recently, like Spiritualize and Mercury Rev. You know, they just they can hear the kind of love put into making their record and the sounds, you know, when you get the master tapes from, say, from Spiritualized and there's like 48 tracks of, you know, beautiful, you know, orchestras and amazing guitar sounds and stuff and, you know, loads of layers of things. It's really interesting to kind of excavate your way through what goes into making the record. But, I mean, the sense of, of achievement of making your own music and your own album, 
know, it, it's far for me outweighs that, that. You know, it's like, you know, for, you know like, we both love the idea of album making. We're quite, you know, love the idea of making like an hour of music that just kind of exists on its own, its own little world. And that's, you know, really, you know, into the achieving that. And for me, that's the greatest kind of pleasure is, is making a record like mm. that, really. Mm. And I think also, which is commendable, uh, commendable um, with with you guys, is that uh, your your social responsibility, for lack of a better word. I mean, you've you've just uh, played a, a show. Was it in London for the for the class of refugees? Yeah, I mean, it's you know, it's like it's it's just it's something that we can do. You know, it's not a big. You're not saying it's going to you know really change the world or anything, but it's just something. If you are. I don't know, if you're a baker or something and someone said, oh, would you mind spending, you know, like a couple of hours after work mm. to, to bake some bread to send to Kosovo? You think, oh, yeah, it's not a lot of skin off my nose. Mm. And it's like, so for, you know, if we're DJing, it's like something we enjoy doing and if it can help other people, then it's cool, you know. It's sure, not, sure. I mean, because, I mean, you've done it, you did it with uh, the Help album as well, so. Yeah, and yeah. Thing, that was, that, it, I mean, it is, it's something we enjoy doing, you know, and it's like, if that can be put to kind of good thing, then it's cool, you know, and we've done homeless you know when we just we dj in london and stuff and we just give enough fee to you know to like a homeless charity and it's like you know it's you know not you know not you know on some mad charity crusade but i mean no. it's just small things that you can do that don't you know that it's not a problem for you then you may as well you know do it, just yeah. as a part of certainly commendable being know. a person isn't it? yes i think so and i think that uh, also says a lot about about who you are but to the point that you You've you've now finished the album. You're going to go the touring all over the show, and um, and because because you you've got quite a hectic schedule, I think, for the for the balance of the year, haven't you? Sorry, I missed that last bit. I'm so sorry. you 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 have quite a a hectic touring. Schedule. Yeah, it's a, it's a grueling schedule, definitely. I mean, it's but uh, yeah, I mean, looking at looking at the you know like kind of booked up to whatever to February two thousand kind of thing. But yeah. I mean. You know, it's exciting. We feel like we've made a record. Um, we want to play it to people. Mm. It's like doing doing the press and stuff. We we you know feel probably the record needs explaining mm. as opposed to the other records, which are very you know it was just very forthright and kind of there kind of thing. We feel this record is quite you know if people kind of get into it, they get a lot from it kind of thing. And we you know it's, we don't mind talking about it. It's good. Great. Great. And, you know, very excited about playing it to people. And when we play live, we like the idea of creating the right environment to hear the music kind of thing. Sure, so, sure. Yeah. And I think um, there's certainly a commitment to try and get you guys down to South Africa at some point as well. Yeah, I mean, I know friends and stuff have gone to, to DJ down there and so it's like a, quite a big, big kind of scene, isn't there? I mean, and there is, there is. And I mean, just, you know, the, uh, I think with, uh, with the Chemical Brothers as well, you... Um, you are seen as a as a band as much as you are seen as um, a group of remixes. So yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, we, yeah, I mean, we like the. I mean, that's what we are. We mm. we see ourselves firstly as like musicians and a band, but we mm. do the other stuff. All the way we make music is influenced by you know like DJing is, is influenced how we make music, and they all they all kind of inter interlock kind of thing. But yeah, for us, you know, when we're playing live, that's when we're making records. That's kind of where we exist, really. We feel right, right. right. That'd be good. Could I ask you one last favour, if I may, Tom? Because yeah. I know your time is at a premium. Um, Five FM is our is our national broadcaster, uh, uh -huh. pop station here in South Africa. Could I ask you to, to perhaps do two or three IDs for me, very quickly? Yeah, sure. Five FM. Five FM. Yeah, is okay. number five. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you can <laughs> you can basically play with it as as you will. I think uh, what we can do is there's basically three. There's a show um, called the Net um, on Five FM. So you could maybe just say, you know, um, hi, this is uh, Tom from the Chemical Brothers, and you're listening to The Net on 5FM. Okay, I'll do that one. Hi, this is Tom from the Chemical Brothers, and you're listening to The Net on 5FM. Okay, thank you. The next one is um, also for 5FM, but it'll be for um, Derek the Bandit. <laughs> <laughs> and he's he's actually a, a keen supporter, and he's a, he does a lot of stuff with uh, Kiss FM, actually, in London. All right. Yeah, so um, away, right. away you go. Okay, this is Tom from the Chemical Brothers, and you're listening to Derek, the Bandit, on 5FM. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. Okay, man. And, um, yeah, it, I think maybe if we can just slip in a generic, just say, hi, this is uh, Tom from the Chemical Brothers, um, <laughs> and you are, um, yeah, you are listening to... Hi. Our new album. Okay. 
Hi, this is Tom from the Chemical Brothers, and you're listening to our new record on 5FM. Superb, thank you very cool. much. Cool, thanks for your time. Thank you, and you okay, good luck with it. Cheers.